Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Meet Your Mission. My name is Kalina White, and I graduated from college this past June. I'm a programs associate with GTSC's Homeland Security today, and after graduation, I started thinking critically about what I was looking for in a career. I didn't want just a job. I wanted a career that followed some of my passions, which include making a difference, seeing tangible progress, and staying connected to the community that I'm serving. Given my current role at Homeland Security today, I invite you to join me on my journey as I talk with people in public service pursuing Homeland Security missions like combating human trafficking, cybersecurity, immigration, intelligence, climate security, and so much more. These short informational interviews mirror what most of my fellow graduates are doing, learning about career opportunities by speaking with different people across different disciplines. Today, I am honored to, and excited to speak with Patricia Cogswell, the former Deputy Administrator of the Transport Transportation Security Administration and a current partner of Defense and Security at Guidehouse. Thank you so much for speaking with me today, Ms. Cogswell. Thank you for having me here. It's one of my favorite topics. Um, so as Deputy Administrator of the Transportation Security Administration, what does that really mean? What did you do day to day? Well, I first off just want to say how much I really enjoyed my time as Deputy Administrator at TSA. So to your point, in that role, you are both expected to be a leader for the organization, identifying and solving problems, incentivizing strategic and innovative investments that continue to improve the agency's approach to transportation security. But you're also responsible for ensuring execution. You're the one sort of on the day-to-day -day basis that brings the pieces together, gets decisions made, makes sure things are working the way they intend to. Some days that means testifying before Congress, talking with the press. A lot of the other days, it's a lot of internal meetings or meetings with DHS partners or airlines, airports, other transportation industry members or other stakeholders to make sure that people have a common view of what the threat environment, the vulnerabilities are, and how to mitigate risk. But probably the most important thing uh, out of that entire role is caring for our workforce. This meant I traveled quite a bit, uh, talking with TSA personnel around the country and overseas, as well as dedicating time and attention on efforts specifically aimed at morale, engagement, career progression, ensuring our people were continuing to both feel the mission, know that they were able to contribute to the mission, and they were continuing to personally grow and develop. So it sounds like you're very hands-on with the um, TSA as a whole. So why should a college graduate consider a career at DHS and specifically TSA? So lots of good reasons why someone should consider a, a career in public, public service writ large. Uh, but I will say just, I will speak a little bit to my own experience. So I actually grew up here in the national capital region. Both my parents instilled in me a passion for public service from early on. As you'll hear from many others, 9-11 pretty much change the trajectory of my career permanently. After 9-11, every level of staff had the opportunity to be involved in solving problems. New offices were created, new programs developed overnight, and then there was the need to mature from startup to institution. So when college graduates ask me about DHS, I say there are a few jobs that can give you the same satisfaction as public service and few federal agencies that have the opportunity for its personnel that DHS has. Because it's still a comparatively young agency and has such a pervasive mission, you have many, many options about what you can do. Whether you stay in one of the components for your entire career, move across the department, there's always the opportunity to either be part of a startup as DHS takes on the next hard problem, or be a subject matter expert in an area that you really are passionate about. Of the national security agencies, I would just argue that DHS probably comes in contact with or is discussed more by people across the United States than any other. That can sometimes be very difficult, but it also means you can build an understanding of government institutions from your own experiences and have the ability of, to be part of just a truly incredible journey. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds like you taught you touched a lot of DHS in your career as well. So you've had a career across DHS and national security, including TSA, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and the President's National Security Council. So was security your personal mission when starting your career? Funny enough, uh, although I knew I was going to go into public service, I didn't really have strong views on where I was going to go. And in fact, while I was in law school, I thought I was going to probably do either environmental or energy law. <laughs> um, but as often as the case, uh, what I have found with people is you you fall into sort of your first job post school through a, a roundabout process. And I just loved it um, as a very junior person, back to where I was earlier saying, um, because I can understand and analyze data and uh, write very quickly. 
and was willing to say yes when asked to work on new things. I got to move around a lot and work with incredible people on really important issues, starting as a GS-12. There's not a lot of places where that happens, <laughs> um, and, and it just sort of grew from there. So as after 9-11, the offers in the security space really took off, and I never really looked back. Um, although I do occasionally note that when I finally retire, I, I would actually like to do more work directly in support of our national parks. <laughs> Excellent. And you talked a little bit about your skill set going into the workforce, but you have an undergraduate degree in math and a law degree. I don't think people would necessarily put those two together when thinking about a skill set. So how would you say those skills developed in the work that contributed to your path? So you would not be the first person who asked this question. <laughs> I think there may be two of us in my law school who had majored in math, um, but it does actually make sense. If you think about a college degree in math, there's a lot of proofs, right? Mathematical models to better understand why the world works the way it does. In broad strokes, those fall into sort of two main areas, deductive and inductive reasoning. One looks at how individual pieces of information and takes those and tries to create a theory that ties them together. The other is a theory that then applies it to individual pieces of data. Well, that's exactly what you do with the law. And so if you think about it from that context, they actually align really well. But even more importantly, to this earlier point, it prepared me incredibly well for my government roles. A math degree is me means I am very comfortable with and focused on what data exists and what it means. And a law degree means I can write and present my analysis to argue for an approach based on all the data. And I'm very comfortable doing so in a lot of different environments. Excellent. That's a match made in heaven. <laughs> I'm not a math person, but you inspired me. I wish I was. <laughs> Um, can you speak a little bit about the breadth of opportunities that are a career in Homeland? You've had experience in transportation, intelligence, policy, border security, screening, and information sharing initiatives. How did you end up involved in all of these different topics? So the shorter answer is, I kept saying yes. Uh, as I noted before, one of the great things about working at DHS is, is opportunity. The opportunity to get involved in new topics with programs or offices as they're created or changed in response to the evolving security environment. I really like to learn new things and I like solving problems. And I have to say, once you do a few special projects and you get to meet people, they remember whether they thought you were a thoughtful problem solver, somebody who can get things done, and someone they enjoyed working with. And so when somebody comes to them for whatever the next new thing is and says, hey, do you know anybody in, your name gets around. I was really fortunate that people kept coming to me and sort of saying, hey, uh, this new thing happened or new change. And I kept saying yes. So my simple recommendation is to periodically take stock of your career. Do you still feel like you're learning? Are you positioned to be effective where you are? Do you like who you're working with? And every so often, test the waters and talk to a network of people about ideas for what you could do next. And if someone comes to you with an offer that meets all of those criteria, say yes. Excellent. Thank you. I think that's all advice we should live by and definitely something that actually Secretary Elaine Duke also advised us on as well. So thank you so much. Um, but thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And thank you for helping us meet our mission. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed being here today.